Hey there. Hope you're having a good day. Um, the JRPG combat system is a classic turn-based combat system. It includes a full suite of functionality that allows you to focus on other aspects of your game. It's designed to be easily integrated into existing projects while providing flexibility to pursue, to pursue your creative goals. In this video series, I am detailing the entire JRPG combat system, allowing you to learn the system, modify it, and even build it yourself if you so choose. You can buy the product on the Unreal Marketplace, link in the description. Obviously, you are free to follow these guys and build it yourself. No purchase necessary. Um, today, I'm going through the Construct um, Battlefield, the Construct Battlefield uh, function which is the sole function in the construction script. So this construction script is going to run um, anytime, anytime an actor is moved or placed in the world, it runs that construction script. And today we're going to talk about all the little things that are going on kind of behind the scenes uh, when constructing the battlefield for use later on in the driver. Um, let me delete this driver and just drag in a fresh one and you see as I drag it in it's going to grab actors kind of move them into the positions I can take the starts and ends and drag them around to visually kind of line it up how I want uh, you see these variables on the right behind my head are going to um, change I can adjust things like the party size if I want it to have eight people um, I can adjust whether I want them to stagger positions or be lined up. You have this little viewport that kind of gives you an example of what it's going to look like uh, when you're actually playing in game. Um, so yeah, all of this we're going to go over today. Kind of how, how mostly the math behind how it adjusts this and lines it up. And so it may be kind of a dry, a dry episode, but it is really important to, to get this right from the beginning. So um, let's get into it. So the construct battlefield function, and I'm going to right click here, close other tabs so that we just have this open. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is grab the driver world location and rotation and store them as variables to be used throughout the system. It's used in many places, so it's important that this is done, obviously. I'm going to talk about this function here in a little bit, relative solve for terrain. Um, it's taking those widget locations, the relative start and end of the party and the troop. Let's talk real quick about uh, these variables here. So the relative start, if you look on the right, it's configured to be instance editable, to show the 3D widget, and to expose on spawn. This allows the... Um, this whole thing where you can kind of grab the widget and drag it around like this. See? And so that's, that's how that's set up for each of these, the troop, party, all of that. And, um, let me real quick, I'm going to switch this guy over to, where are you at? Uh, let's take him off party. And the construction script is only going to run when you drag, when you drag it around. Okay. And like, let's move this guy to, I guess, position five. And let's drag it so that it moves. So you see he drops in a different position. Let's change the, uh, got the driver selected. Let's change it to where the, uh, where are you? JRPG CS. There you are. Um, let's change the, let's turn off stagger positions. You can see how they shift around. If um, we take this guy and we copy him a few times, so there are multiple stacked on top of each other, but as soon as we drag it, you see how it does some corrective um, stuff. Why didn't you get picked up? I'm not sure, but I'm going to delete you. I don't like you. Uh, being referenced by the driver, but he wasn't being grabbed by him. So um, if we look at the troop, tell to stagger position, see how they kind of stagger. Okay, and so these little widgets here, um, these are those variables that I was just showing you. 
And the construction script does a lot of what I was just showing you, where it's moving stuff around and getting it ready. So that's the start and ends of party and troop. Um, once we've done a relative solve for terrain, again, I'll go over that function here in a minute. We're going to clear the spline points of the party spline and the troop spline. And these are actor components, and these are purely visual. They're there just to help you see, kind of like you saw here, you see these lines with the dots on them. They're just to help you kind of visualize what's going on when you set it up. We're going to map points online, another function that I'll go over here in a second. We're going to set the party relative positions, um, which is another variable, the relative positions of the party and the troop. So you want to create those variables in your driver. Um, and then you want to set the spline points on the party and troop. Okay, coordinate space local, update spline. Okay. And then here we're going to cache the party location and the troop location because we're about to iterate on them with a for each loop, going through the party location, doing relative solve for terrain. Um, depending on whether stagger is set up, uh, whether or not stagger is set up, this is going to output the location, but it only changes it if there is a stagger. Um, if the stagger positions is checked, and we'll go over that function here in a moment. And then we're setting the array element for each. And all this is doing is staggering them and also correcting for any kind of terrain um, discrepancy there. In case there's a hill, you don't want your actor to appear inside the hill, that sort of thing. So that's what that's doing. And then same for the troop. So this is the same thing. And then lastly, we're going to collect all the combat actors sort them by their position, place them in their positions, and then find the relative centers of several key parts of the um, driver to be used later. A lot of the construction script, aside from just the visual part that I was showing you a moment ago where you drag it around, you can move things, stagger or whatnot, it's also collecting data about the driver to be used um, later on. All right, so now let's talk about these functions. Uh, so relative solve for train, this is one used pretty frequently. All it's doing is it's doing some rotation of their relative location, which as you can see by this little diamond, it is a pass. Um, this is a pass by reference, right? Um, which means later on we can set it um, without needing to then set it outside the function, right? Um, we output the relative output location just in case it's needed, but um, because it's a pass by reference, it can be set in this way. And all this is doing is rotating the relative location by the driver world location and then adding the driver location. This converts it to a world location. All we're, we're doing that so that we can add 600 on the Z, subtract 600 on the Z to get the start and end of a line trace. And this is gonna collide with the visibility channel, which should cover most everything. You could come back and change this, swap this out with a line trace for objects. If you wanted to just trace for like world static, which tends to be terrain. If you run into an issue with actors being placed kind of funky, it could be that um, the trace channel or the or you need to sw swap this out with a uh, four objects at its world static, depending on what you're trying, what your uh, setup is. Um, and it's taking the hit location, and then we're reversing it back into a relative location by subtracting the world location, unrotating by the driver world rotation, and then we add five to the z axis axis just so that people's feet aren't in the floor. Okay, that's just a little bit of buffer just for visual whatnot. Okay, so that's what this relative solve for terrain function does. We use that to adjust these locations. Map points online is in the uh, blueprint function library. What it's doing is it's taking a start and end in a given count and then outputting an array based on the count. So the the number of entries in this array is going to equal the count. And it's putting the points on that line. So relatively simple, but 
there are a few math steps. So I'm going to show this here in case you're wanting to just duplicate it. Um, but essentially what it's doing is it is starting with zero. And as you noticed, our count starts with one. But we want to start with zero here for this for loop. So we're subtracting one from the count so that the, the total number is the same. But we want to start with zero because when we add the result of this formula to the end to then basically populate our line, we want it to be on that endpoint. We don't want it to be offset, right? So we want to start with zero because zero times whatever result of this is zero because we want to start on this point. And then it adds here, um, this is here to prevent a divide by zero error, just making sure it's at the very least one. We're adding that to the end, and then we're creating an array of points, which is a local variable here. And after we're done iterating through, adding all of those points, we have our points online, which is the return node here. Okay, This is because I'm paranoid. I do this a lot. Um, I clear the local array the local variable. I don't know that it's even necessary. I just do it out of habit because I don't, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm paranoid about that stuff. So I always clear it before I work on it and then build it and then output it. Okay. And that's the map points online. And so that's that function. Then down here, um, so these relative positions are not local variables, whereas these party location arrays are. So side note, these are not local variables. Um, so if you're setting these up, they need to be vector arrays in, in your driver. And then for each of these, we are doing a relative solve for terrain. We've already gone over this function. Let's talk about the relative position stagger. The goal here is to stagger based on the, uh, position of the line, offset, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, right? So the concept is simple. The math, I, I'm not good at math. So this stuff is always difficult for me to figure out. But um, basically what it does is the start and end, it finds the look at rotation. In other words, the rotation of that line. And then we're... <clears throat> rotating a vector of y plus 100 or y minus 100, depending on whether it's even or odd, which is determined by this here. Uh, this modulo 2 is going to output 0 if it's even. Okay, So if it's greater than 0, that means it's odd. So depending, we select uh, that, and we're rotating that by the uh, start and, and look at rotation of the line itself, which the result is going to be, it's going to be a uh, forward sum and back sum, forward sum, back sum, forward sum, back sum. And then it only does that if the stagger variable is set to true. If not, it just returns zero. Okay. Now this function is a pure function, and that's just by ticking this box here. And the reason why we can call it a pure function is because it doesn't modify anything. It just does, it does some math, some vector operations. That's all it does. So it's fine to mark that one as pure. And then we use it here. We um, add it to the party location, and we're doing the same thing later for the troop location. And we're outputting the relative um, output location, which has been solved for terrain so that they're not going to be through the floor. And then we set the party relative positions. So previously we had the relative positions just on a line that may or may not have been, you know, in the floor, right? And now we're staggering them and then check, making sure it's not um, in the floor. Do the same for the troop. And then lastly, we're going to collect the combat actors, sort them by position, place them in their positions, and then find relative centers. So collecting combat actors is pretty straightforward. We have this combat actors array, which is a variable that is used pretty frequently throughout the entire driver. Um, 
It is just an array of actors. And what we're doing is we're clearing that array. Then we're getting all actors with the interface, the JRPG CS combat interface, which needs to be implemented on all of your um, combat actors, right? And we're, if they implement that interface, we, um, we've got them in our combat actors array. Okay, so we've collected all the combat actors. Now we're gonna sort them by position. So we have a troop position sorted and a party position sorted, two actor arrays um, that are sorted by position, position starting with one. So the zero, the zero array element is always gonna be invalid. Okay, so zero, it's starting with one up until the, the position, um, the max position, okay? So for each combat actor, we're st storing the current actor, and then we're telling it to join combat, which is a function with the uh, JRPG CS combat interface, um, which is going to return a value of saying it's in the party, yes or no, and then what is its position in that party? Um, you can set position by actor, right? But this also accounts for those positions being incorrect. Either two actors sharing the same position, which shouldn't happen, or an actor having a position um, value that is not possible based on the current setup. And so what this is going to do is it's going to fix that. It's going to cycle through, make sure everyone lines up okay. Um, but this first part, is just collecting information. So it sets the current max size depending on whether it's party or troop, which these are two um, integer variables as well that you saw me setting earlier in here where you can say troop size, party size, right? Um, and then setting the max size and then depending on which side it's on, it's going to be interacting with um, these different ones, setting that as the current group to evaluate. And so based on the current group and the current position, it's going to check if that slot is already taken. And it does that by seeing if that index has a valid actor. And if it's not valid, it means it's a free spot. They can take it. And so we set that array element, sizing it to fit to the current actor and selecting either the troop or party um, arrays based on whether or not it's party. Now, if it is valid, that means it's taken. Spots taken. Seats taken. Um, and what we do is we um, increment the current position by one. So go up one. We're checking the next up. Um, we tell it, hey, here's your new position. This is another um, interface function here. Telling the actor, here's your new position. And then... Um, they should never return not okay to this. So if they don't, then, um, you know, it's going to give a diagnostic message. And then we are taking the, um, this current position that we just increased. Is it less than or equal to the max size? Is it still a possible position? If it's not, I'll put another diagnostic message or a different diagnostic message saying that uh, the max trooper party size was exceeded, blah, blah, blah. And then assuming all of that is okay, which it should be, we come back and check again, is that valid? And we cycle. We cycle until we either run out of positions or we find a spot for this actor. When we find a spot, we put them in. If we run out of positions, we're throwing a message and um, you know that should happen. That's a bug you'd have to fix. Um, either expand the party size or uh, or less at combat actors. Okay. And that's that function. So we've sorted them by position. So the result is these arrays are filled uh, position one through the max count at index one. Remember I said it starts at one. Zero is going to be invalid. So index one on up to the max count. Um, and we're going to use that later to place the combat actors in positions. We take the party position sorted and the party relative positions. 
Now note the relative position starts at index zero. And you'll see that here when we subtract one from the index, because we're gonna iterate on this position sorted actors array. And zero is gonna be invalid, so we wanna make sure the index is not zero. We're skipping zero. And then we check if it's, check if it's a valid actor. And most of this here is just making sure the data makes sense before we do anything with it, right? That's what a lot of functions are going to end up being. Just making sure everything's okay. Because the point is we cycle through those actors and set them in their designated positions. Which is what we're doing here. We're getting this relative location. We're going to rotate it. And we're going to add the driver world location. and then we set their actor location here. Okay. Sorry if this is really messy. Um, now for the rotation, depending on whether it's the party or the troop, we rotate one way or the other based on the driver's world rotation because setting the actor location and rotation is a global location and rotation. So we have to base it off of the driver's location and rotation. Okay, that's that function. We've moved them into their positions. Um, and then lastly, we're going to get the relative centers. All this is doing is the map points online function using a count of three, which means index one being the second value because you start at zero with indexes. So index zero, one is going to be the middle. And so we're just using that to get the um, middle. We set the relative center of party, and then we use this pass by reference to um, set this again based on the terrain so it's not in the ground. And then we set the relative location of that party center widget. We do the same thing for the troop here. And then finally, we are getting a, ver a vector array average of this uh, relative center of party and relative center of troop to set the relative center of the battlefield. Solve for terrain and then set that battlefield center widget. Okay. Um, that should do it for this, for this um, construct battlefield. Uh, yeah, really dry because it's a lot of collecting information. Um, but that's it. That's how, that's the construct battlefield. Um, that's the function. So, uh, let me know if you have any questions, if you have, um, yeah, if you have any questions, you have any comments, let me know in the comments and I hope you have a good day.